So you've decided that you want to create your very own online course, and that is a great place to be. You're no doubt excited and eager to get the ball rolling and start working on turning your knowledge and your skills and your experiences into a digital product that can help to change your students' lives. So in this video, I want to give you a complete beginner's guide to follow in order to turn that idea that you have in your head into a great online course that people will happily pay you for over and over again. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to the channel for everybody who is new here. My name is Ryan Ford and I create content with the aim of teaching online coaches and course creators how to scale their sales while working less. Now, just before we dive into this particular video, I want to also put something else in your hands that is going to help you with not just creating your first online course, but will also show you how to market your course, which is actually the hardest part of being a successful online course creator. It's called the Digital Creator Startup Guide. It's completely free, and I created this guide using all of my own knowledge and my experience building my own six-figure digital content business selling online courses and coaching programs. And I have simplified the entire journey into a simple step-by-step -step process that you can follow yourself so that you can progress quicker and avoid all of the most common mistakes that digital content creators make when trying to earn money creating online courses and selling their own digital products. So if you are looking for a way to make money online creating and selling your own online courses and any other type of digital product, you can grab yourself a free copy of the Digital Creator Startup Guide by clicking the link that is somewhere on your screen up here now and also down below in the video description. Okay, now moving on from that, let's talk about the journey for you to create your very own online course. My first piece of advice for you, which I know the majority of you will not be expecting, is to start first with working on building an audience. Now, the reason why this is important is because most people start by creating an online course first and when it's finally finished and ready to sell, they have nobody to sell it to. And this then leads to them making an even bigger mistake, which is to follow the advice of many other online gurus out there and start throwing money into running paid advertising and buying all sorts of expensive software and secret funnels and marketing courses and so on and so on and so on. Don't do this. What you should do first before you start working on creating your online course is work on building an audience using one to two platforms tops and then focus on getting that audience onto your email list. Now the platforms that I recommend to you in order to build your audience is right here on YouTube or by starting your own blog. Now the reason why I suggest these two places over any other social platform is because the content that you create on these two platforms, so on a YouTube channel or on your own blog, that content is evergreen and it can be discovered by people in the upcoming weeks and months and years and decades to come. Whereas content that you create on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok and all the other social media places, that content disappears into an ever updating newsfeed. YouTube and Google at their heart are search engines and they're also the two most visited websites on the planet where billions of people are searching for information on any given subject every single second of every single day. So if you are therefore creating content on YouTube or on your blog on topics that your audience are searching for help within, either on Google or YouTube, that content can be discovered indefinitely. It's what's known as evergreen content, meaning that you can create a video just like this one once and people looking for an answer to this question can discover it over and over and over again indefinitely. Now, if you compare that to a video you create for, let's say, Instagram, how is anybody going to find that video tomorrow or next week or three weeks from now? I mean, sure, they can click on your profile and they can scroll down through all of your posts to find it, but three things. One, who actually does that? Two, if somebody doesn't know that you exist, how would they find you in the first place? And three, people don't use Instagram or any other social media platform to ask questions or to search for answers to their problems. They use either Google or YouTube. So step number one is to start working on either YouTube content or a blog and create consistent content based on your niche that people who are interested in in that particular subject are looking for and that will help them to overcome those particular problems that they are currently struggling with and looking for answers to help them solve. This will 
This will allow you to start building an audience of potential customers for your online course. Now, like I mentioned a moment ago, once you have started creating content for your audience, the next aim should be to get them onto your email list. The best way to sell your online course or any type of product or service that you have is through email marketing. Now, I won't dive too deep into this in this particular video because I have plenty of other videos on the channel talking about email marketing and why having an email list is your most powerful asset that you could own as a content creator. But simply put, if you want to make consistent money selling your online course, you need to start building an email list as soon as possible. Now, to do this, you need to include what is called a lead magnet inside of every piece of content that you make. So. If you think back to the beginning of this video, and if you stick around until the end, you'll see me repeat the offer. I offered you a free copy of my Digital Creator Startup Guide. This is one of my lead magnets, and it's something that I offer to my audience that is relevant to the content that they're consuming currently. And in order to get their hands on it, they have to give me their email address. Now, your lead magnet, it could be a downloadable guide like mine. It could be a free access to a video training. It could be a quiz. It could be a free coaching call. There are so many different things that you could offer as your lead magnet. The most important thing in order for it to work is that it is related to your niche and it's something that your content viewers would find irresistible. So irresistible that they are happy to give you their email address in order to get their hands onto it. So before you start creating an online course, those two things that I've spoken about need to come first. You need to be making evergreen content consistently in order to expose yourself to your ideal audience. And secondly, you need to start capturing as many email addresses as possible from that audience. If you don't start with those two things, you will find yourself in the painful and frustrating place of having created a great online course and having no customers to sell it to, which is heartbreaking. I've made this mistake. I know what it feels like and it hurts, believe me. And I don't want you to go through the same pain because it sucks. So please make sure that those two things are in place before you start building an online course. Once you have those in place, now you can start planning your online course. Now what I recommend first is that you spend time interacting with your audience, both viewers and your email subscribers, and ask them questions about what their biggest frustrations are and what type of content that you could create in order to help them to overcome their biggest frustrations and their biggest pain points. This helps you to get an understanding of what it is that your audience struggles with because once you know this, now you can create a product that helps them to solve these struggles, aka your online course. And if you combine this feedback from your audience plus your own experiences that you um, have overcome along your journey inside of your particular niche, you will now have a good baseline to start creating your online course curriculum. Now with any online course, when creating or mapping out the curriculum, you always need to be aware of the student's journey. The course should be outlined from step one all the way through to the final step, which should then deliver the desired goal or outcome that your course offers to your student you need to think very clearly about the journey that the student goes through as they progress through the course. It needs to be planned and, and structured in such a way that they can follow along easily and understand exactly what to do step by step. Do not make the common mistake that many new content or course creators, I should say, make, which is to try and pack as much information as possible into their course, which is jumbled up all over the place. All this is going to do is confuse the student and frustrate them further because they won't be able to keep track with what's going on if the process is jumbled up and all over the place and if the content itself is too complicated, if you've gone too far ahead without covering the basics first. So what you need to do is start at the beginning of your course with the most basic steps for your students to take and then slowly progress through the entire process in a way which your students can understand and follow along easily. Now, a great way to think about this, the way that I was taught, is if you think about your student, think of them as a newborn baby who cannot walk yet. You wouldn't take that baby outside and expect them to start jogging or running or riding a bike. To reach those points, they would have many smaller steps to take along the way until they learn and they're ready for that level. Now, I know that you, you as the content creator, you are already at a much more advanced level than your students. So therefore, it's very easy for you to forget or to gloss over the basic steps or the beginner steps because you're so much further ahead. However, you need to keep the student at the forefront of your mind, not yourself, because most of them are at the very beginning 
of their journey. They're not ready for advanced lessons yet or just as, uh, very early on in the course before you've taught them and covered the basics. Your online course, if done correctly, should give them a direct path from point A, which is their current pain point, to point B, which is their desired transformation. It should be lined up in such a way that it's easy for them to understand and follow without causing them overwhelm or confusion. So when you're creating your course curriculum, always keep the journey of the student in mind and make sure that the lessons and material inside are arranged in such a way that it's easy to follow and understand without causing confusion or overwhelm. Now that may seem obvious, but many course creators make the mistake of diving straight into advanced stuff or just having a curriculum that's packed with information but it's jumbled all over the place because their mind is focused on cramming as much information as possible inside of their online course, thinking that this is going to improve the course rather than thinking about the students and the steps that they need to take along their journey in order to achieve their desired goal, which is what your course should show them how to achieve. So always make sure that your course curriculum lines up with the steps that your students need to take in the right order, in order for them to reach their desired transformation. Then once you have your curriculum planned out, the next step is to start creating the content. Now this is where you turn on your camera and you film your videos and you make any other type of content you are planning on including inside of your course. One point that I will make in this part of the process is to include both video and written content inside of the course. Now the reason I suggest this is because people like to learn in different ways. Some people prefer to just watch video content like myself, but some people also like consuming written content and some for convenience would like to be able to print out the material inside of your course to have with them as a reference point while they're learning. So as an example, inside of my flagship course, the Digital Creator Academy, for quite a few of my video lectures, I also have a downloadable PDF version of the lecture, which highlights the main points and steps that I make inside of each video. So as my students go through the course and they're working on creating their own digital product, instead of having to keep going back and watch my video lectures again to remind them, them sorry, to remind themselves of a certain point, they can instead either download or they can print out a condensed PDF version of certain lectures and have this with them to reference as they work on their own project. It's much more convenient for some of them and a preferred way for some of them to learn. Now, you don't have to do this with every video inside of your course, but I do recommend that you include some written content inside of your course to complement the videos as this gives your students the freedom to choose between the type of content that they would like to consume and learn from. And once you've finished that step and created your course content, the final stage is to upload your content onto your chosen online course platform. Now I personally use Teachable for this, but feel free to do your own research and check out the, you know, the many platforms that you have available to you. And once you've done that, you can then reach out to the audience and let them know that you have a new online course. Now this is why I said in the beginning of the video that it's so important to work on building an audience first and getting them onto your email list before you start creating an online course. So that when the time comes, you can announce your new online course and generate some initial sales for all of the hard work and the efforts that you've put in. If you do it the other way around, which most people make the mistake of doing, and you create your course first, you'll only be frustrated because you'll have nobody to sell your course to and then you'll have to do what I told you in the first place, which is to go back and start working on building an audience, which takes time and can be frustrating and disappointing for a lot of new course creators because they don't know where they've gone wrong. They think that their course is no good and nobody's interested in learning from them. And that's simply not true. Now for a complete guide on how to not only build your audience, but to also sell your online course and other digital products consistently and indefinitely, you should grab yourself a free copy of my Digital Creator Startup Guide, which will show you how to build a successful business for yourself selling digital products such as online courses. The link for that will be somewhere up here on the screen and as always also down below in the video description. That's all I have for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you the very best of luck with creating your very own online course. Until next time, take care.